things eaten by barnacles are shoved into the space above them. One of these wooden fence thingies is embedded deep within this rock wall. This one piece of grating allows some projectiles to pass through it. In the last episode, I said that there was only one fail message in episode 1. I was wrong. If you exit and re-enter a certain boundary within this area, you can hear the HEV suit's warning message as many times as you want. On this map, there is some geometry that was clearly deleted on accident. These shards of glass are visible before the glass actually breaks. If you grab this combine energy ball and throw it at this monitor, it will break off. Once I got it to land just so that instead of walking over or around it, Alex teleported around it. If you push this monitor all the way into the train car, it will disappear once the door closes, which is one of the most obvious signs that you've been teleported into a completely different train. If you stand on something while falling, you can avoid taking fall damage. NPCs can be taken to unusual areas if the player gives them a ramp to walk on. Let me get out of your way. If you are on a ladder while also standing on something, when you jump you will receive the combined force of both jumping off the ladder and jumping off the ground. The direction you move in is influenced by where you are looking. I originally cut this fact because I didn't think it was very good, but I did manage to make use of it once in a video, so I'm bringing it back. Shooting things can cause them to move closer to you instead of farther away. Things that a barnacle has begun eating will be able to pass through everything, including the ground. Alex can be vaporized by this ball holder thingy if she is pushed into it. The elevator will never begin moving and the door at the bottom will never close because Alex has not entered the room. Citizens almost never fire their RPGs in Half-Life 2. The RPG requires that NPCs using it check the area in front of them to make sure that the blast would not hit the user. The two checks draw a line between the NPC and a point 120 units in front of the NPC. Yes, there are two of them and they are both set up incorrectly. The problem with the checks is that they weren't set up so that the line would pass through the firing NPC. In short, NPCs don't fire rockets because they think they'll hit themselves. I fixed this in Half-Life 2 Chaos, and the only major difference I've seen so far is on City 1712. 
The map became noticeably easier, especially on hard. Their help leads to you having to spend much less time camping around this crate. It also makes it more likely for you to actually be able to take any citizens over to the next map. I think this actually is the way that this level was intended to be balanced. Despite the two incorrect checks, there are some places where NPCs do actually fire their rockets. I have no idea why. If you skip a very small amount of this level, you can have two snipers active at once. The sniper on the right is only used when you're in the next building. Having them both on at once makes the room a lot easier. 